welcome back to Auto Social UK. I want to start by saying a massive thank you to everyone who said that my new mic made a difference to my most recent video. So I have picked what is quite possibly the windiest day and the windiest location. So we'll see if the mic withstands it. It was only about £40 off of Amazon, so fingers crossed. If it is bad, I'm really, really sorry. I want to start by saying a massive thank you to everyone that subscribed to my channel over the last couple of weeks. It really means so much to me and please keep subscribing. I'm going to do a giveaway and it's pretty good towards the end of the video. So if you want to see what you need to do to be in a chance of entering the giveaway, then make sure you watch it to the end. Okay, look, I know I'm late to the party. In fact, I think the party's over and the after party's finished as well. But when Cooper BMW in Chelmsford asked me if I wanted to review the M1 335i, I was hardly going to say no, considering it's the most controversial car to have come out of 2019. Despite being out for nearly six months now, it's going to be a long time until we stop comparing the 135i to its older brother, the 140. The 2019 135i is a higher quality and more practical hot hatch than the M140i it replaces. The rear wheel drive has now been replaced by an X-Drive system that is predominantly front wheel drive. Even more controversially, the old 3 litre 6 cylinder engine has now been replaced by a 2 litre 4 cylinder. There are huge benefits to the upgrade. For starters, this new engine is light. BMW claims it weighs around 32 kilograms less than the old 3 litre straight 6 turbo from the 140i, yet the outputs aren't far behind. From the outside, the vast new kidney grille dominates the car's character. This is actually something that did take me some time getting used to, but it has grown on me significantly. At the other end, you'll notice a twin tailpipe design, along with a set of LED taillights. I'm a massive fan of the rear of the car, and I'm very happy they chose not to use those silly plastic casings that every brand seems to be leaning towards. There is a really high quality, chunky M Sport steering wheel, Higher end models get a 10.25 inch displays with digital instrument cluster and, offered for the first time, a colour head up display. Inside, the 1 Series has seriously upped its game. The F40 has increased the design and quality of the car, so much so that it almost has Mini 8 Series vibes. Like throughout the rest of the trims, the 135 get this 8.8 .8 inch coloured touchscreen and that has voice and gesture control. The great thing about the BMW 1 Series is it hasn't felt that it has to abide by all of the new rules and all of these people getting rid of physical buttons. The 1 Series still has loads of physical buttons for your temperature, for your heated seats, for your radio and I think personally that makes the car far easier to use. The range topping 135i gets these lovely Alcantara suede and contrast stitching sports seats which are super comfortable. Plus there's also little hues of red and blue on the seats and on the seat belts to remind you that you're in an M car. Another big bonus of that slightly smaller engine is it takes up less space. In fact, that means that there's now more room on the interior of the BMW 1 Series than ever before. More space in the front, and more space in the rear. In fact, you can now happily sit three adults side by side with no problems at all. The 135i is slightly slower than its predecessor, but it's still very much in line with its competitors, the Audi S1, the Golf R and the Mercedes A35. In a straight line, the 135 will get you from 0 to 62 in 4.8 seconds when you use launch control. Most of the time in daily driving, the 135i X-Drive is actually sitting in front wheel drive, but stick your foot down and it can send up to 50% of the torque to the rear wheels. So it is slower than the 140 in a straight line, but thanks to that X-Drive technology, pitch this against the 140 on a tight track or a bendy road, and you can guarantee that this would come out quicker. As with a lot of modern cars like this, the experience you get from the BMW all comes down to how you drive it. So going around town nice and slowly in low gears, it's really quiet and it's super comfortable. But if you do want to stick your foot down, 
there is loads of fun. And thanks to that X drive system, even on back roads, you can still be really confident in the BMW's performance. So I hinted earlier, have they made the 135 more Tish friendly? And it's a huge thumbs up from me. Now, I've never been one to hide my emotions about BMWs. I love BMWs. I love the look of them. When I was younger, I used to have a 118D when I was doing a lot of commuting and that was brilliant on fuel and great for what it was. However, I have a massive love-hate relationship for performance BMWs and especially the rear wheel drive models. I like to know that I can put my foot down in a car and I'm not gonna lose control. And the old BMWs were a little bit too much skittish for me. I know that's more of a personal preference and it definitely goes down to a driving style. But personally, I far prefer the X-Drive and knowing that I have a little safety comfort of that four wheel drive system. So I thought it'd be fun, a little bit like with the Golf GTI TCR that I did, that we did a little spill the tea on the questions about the things people don't like on the BMW 135 and see if Claire has a counter argument for these things. Um, so I've got a few questions here to ask her on what she thinks about the 135i. I'm ready for it now. <laughs> <laughs> so the first is, um, do you think BMW were wrong to reduce the power of the new generation 135? Um, no, I don't. Um, I think BMW done this to basically keep up with like the, the S3s, the Golf Rs, um, the A35, uh, they've all gone down to two litre. So they are accessing a different type of market to like the 135s and the two and the 235s and the uh, like the original ones and the mm. 240s. Um, they have three litre engines so that they're a lot more to, like expensive to insure, expensive to tax. Um, and now BMW are hitting that generation, yeah. so they're getting the sort of opening the market up. Yeah. But for people that still want like the three liter engines, we still do like the M2 and stuff. So it's not like they're, um, you know, completely getting... cancelling them Absolutely. out. Absolutely, they're just opening the market up even more. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you think 140i drivers will miss the rear wheel drive when switching to the X drive system? Funny you ask this. Um, so yesterday, I'm going to tell you a story. Um, I had a gentleman who ha had a 240 that he bought with us. Um, he's had it three years now, so he's just coming up to three years. Um, and he came in yesterday um, to have a look at the new 135. He didn't even realise it was a two litre. So um, we actually mm. went out in this car that you've taken out today um, and we took it on similar roads to that you took it on. Um, and it was only when we got back that I told him it was a two litre because he didn't he didn't do much research before he came in, nothing like that. Um, and because of the X drive, because the car's now got X drive, um, it people aren't realising that you can put so much more power into it. Um, just to give you a for instance, like he mentioned that um, when he comes into like on dual carriages way, when there's a bend, you can't put the full power down of like yeah. the two forties. Um, whereas in this you can. So um, no, and he bought one. So yeah. I, I don't, I don't think so at all. It's just reusing the power like in a different way. Absolutely, yeah. Um, do you think there'll be a hot hatch to rival the Mercedes A forty five coming? Ooh -hoo. Um, well, we've obviously got the M two CS just launched. So that is built on the same sort of shape as, as the one series. It's a similar size. Oh, okay. Um, so although it's not the, although that's already been launched and it's still built built off the previous sort of two series shape, um, for people wanting to really go the extra mile in terms of power, that we've already got that. Yeah. Um, we have done one M's in the past though. Nothing's been confirmed, but who knows? I mean, BMW sort of are always one to bring out a wild card. So yeah, knows? definitely. So I know that you the traitor have owned golf R's. <laughs> so what would you now choose between the 135i and the golf R? Yeah, yeah. so I've had two golf R's in the past. Um, one was uh, quite highly modified um, and the other wasn't. It was just completely standard that uh, I got brand new. Um, the thing with the golf is both of them, even though one of them was really, really modified, it was quite a boring car. Mm. Um, for me, I think they're brilliant. I think for the money, they are absolutely fantastic. And I see why so many people are going because you get so much for your money with the Golf yeah. Rs. There's so much power and they're reliable. And if anything goes wrong, of course, they're quite cheap. But for me, it just didn't have, um, it didn't have what like the two, I've had a 240 as well, and it didn't have what like the 240 has. Um, the 135 for me is perfect. I yeah. literally couldn't, I, I wouldn't want to change it. Um, 
the Golf R was a great car, but I'm a, a worth BMW, so I'm going to have to say that I'm a huge <laughs> BMW fan. Um, so for me, it's just it's still got the it's still in the prestige market, but you still get that bit of power if you want. So it's an everyday car, but it's it's very nice. But it, it, it does done. it does feel that that is essentially what BMW have done to an extent. Is they're kind of thinking right. Well, we've bought out, like, everybody likes BMWs, there's no denying that. We've bought out all these really nice cars, but this Golf R is still doing really well. Do you know what I mean? Like, the, yeah. const the constant thing is, like, wanting to knock it off. So, I guess they've kind of thought, well, what does the Golf R have that the 135 and the 140 hasn't? And that is, it is just that loot that little bit of loot loss of control that i said that i didn't like about yeah. the previous cars they've obviously tapped into that and thought right if we do make an x drive system and see how we go with that it's going to open the market to to people who perhaps would have had a golf r in the past and then drove a drove a 140 and thought no this is just too skittish for me yeah. because people would think that oh good you going, especially going from a golf r which is very planted to then driving a, a 140 you probably would think this is a little bit unnerving to an extent yeah, so yeah. it must be a lot easier now to capture those people from the golf R market looking to change because it's now a lot a lot less skittish you're absolutely right like people that had golf R's in the past to go up to something like uh, an m2 or or an m like 240 that the price was quite a big jump it was obviously you're jumping up from a two liter to a three liter um insure so insure again insurance costs things like yeah. that um but the 135 just literally fills that gap for people yeah, that definitely. want to delve into the prestige market but not you know spend an absolute arm and a leg when yeah. when they're probably still only young and, and like saving for house and other things like that so i think they've literally ticked every box they could bmw um and after driving it myself for a little while i think the 135 is outstanding the way it performs and i think they've done absolutely the right thing mm. um so uh, kind of on to that do, do you think, though, that BMW performance drivers are concerned about fuel economy? Do you find that, or is it not really something they're that bothered about? A few questions that customers have asked me, um, not just about the 135, but about like, all of our models, like even like 3 Series and stuff, um, do X drives use more fuel? Um, I mean, yeah, they do. They, they can do. It depends how you drive them. Um, but realistically, if you're getting a car like a 135 or, you know, Golf R's, things like that, um, I think people have already stop worrying about the fuel yeah. consumption um because they're you know big engine petrol cars um people that go up buy these cars don't often have them in eco pro all the time or yeah. um i think people don't really tend to no. worry about that no. um i think the performance for people buying these cars the performance outweighs the yeah the, 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 the fuel economy fuel, yeah, yeah definitely so thank you so much for answering my questions no worries <laughs> i'm glad you enjoyed the car yeah, you did very well i did really really like the car um and i guess that leads on to me not having to do this for once um but what should people do if they're looking at getting a 135 so 135s um so i'm located in um cooper bmw chelmsford um if you want to take one of these for a spin or if you just want to have an idea on what, what they cost uh, something like that so um if you're looking at uh, potentially leasing a car i would say that's the best monthly payment option we have at the moment um just under two thousand pound deposit on eight thousand miles per annum over a three-year agreement for a brand new m135i um but you're looking at sort of early £300 a month depending on what good. sort of specification you want so you can get literally a prestige hot hatch um, for such a small monthly payment um, and me and myself driving one I mean we've got a demonstrator there so if you did want to pop down give us a call on 01245 459 222 and don't forget to ask for me Claire and I'll pop all their details below as well if you don't want to keep pausing the video to find out what the number is, I'll pop that <laughs> below as well. But yeah, please get in touch if you're thinking of getting a BMW. Claire's super helpful and she'll, uh, yeah, she'll help you find a car. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'm sorry I ended up having to voice over quite a lot of stuff, but I'll insert some clips of me pretty much being blown away and you'll see why I voiced over a lot of it. Um, but if you have liked this video, then make sure you give it a massive thumbs up. And as I mentioned earlier, I am gonna be doing a giveaway. So thank you so much to everyone that subscribed to the channel in the last couple of weeks. I've been blown away with your guys' support, I always am. But I do really want to get to that 1,000 subscribers, so I have a little incentive. I have chosen to give away a track day. So here's the details of which ones I've chosen. 
So how this is gonna work is everyone that's already subscribed to my channel or anybody that subscribes until my new video comes out is gonna be put in a prize draw to win this track day. So make sure you subscribe to my channel to be in for a chance of winning it. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to give it a massive thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.